Welcome to Plutus Project Based Learning 2023 from Gimbal Labs. Thank you for watching this video. In this module, we are building our first transactions, and in this lesson, we will look for the first time at how to interact with a smart contract address. In this video, you'll see your first example of how to lock funds at a contract address using Cardano CLI. Let's review this diagram from module 101. Earlier in this module, when you learned how to build Cardano addresses with Cardano CLI, you saw that we can use a public key to generate a wallet address, and that when we spend UTXOs from that wallet address, we must have the private key associated with the public key. You've also seen that we can build contract addresses by using Plutus scripts. When we do, we must follow validation rules for unlocking UTXOs from the contract address. In the case of Always Succeeds, there are no rules. We can unlock any UTXO at any time. But as our validators become more complicated, the rules become more specific. And that's where Plutus really gets interesting. For now, we will look at how to lock and unlock tokens from an Always Succeeds contract. We built the Always Succeeds contract in three different ways in Module 101. In this module, you've seen how to build a contract address using Cardano CLI address build. And now we will take a look for the first time at how to interact with this contract address. In the documentation below this video, three Always Succeeds addresses are provided for your reference. These are the same addresses that were generated in Lesson 102.2. You can copy and paste all of these into the terminal so that you can query each of these addresses, like this. There are a lot more UTXOs at the Always Succeeds contract address than there were in the wallet that we looked at in the previous video. But the structure of each of these UTXOs should look familiar. We have a transaction hash, a transaction index, some value, and in many of these UTXOs, some sort of datum. In this lesson, you'll see that the only difference between sending a simple transaction and sending a locking transaction to a contract address is that we must include datum in our outputs to the contract address. Let's extend our definition of UTXOs. Any UTXO consists of the following. A transaction hash, which is the hash of the transaction that created the UTXO as an output. A transaction index, which allows us to identify different UTXOs coming from the same transaction. Some value, which always includes Lovelace and can include some other tokens, and possibly some datum. We can see all of these elements here. Transaction hash, transaction index, value, and potentially some datum. If there is datum, it might look something like this. And if there's no datum, you'll see that. TX out, datum none. So what is datum? It's information that can be included in a UTXO. This is a big topic. And there are a variety of ways that we will look at this topic throughout this course. For now, the most important thing you need to know is that a UTXO at a contract address must include a datum. If datum is not included, it will be impossible to unlock or spend the UTXO at the contract address. This UTXO is spendable because it has datum. But this one right here is actually not because it doesn't have any datum attached to it. This fact still blows my mind a little bit, but it is the way that Cardano works and you have to get used to it. Whenever you are sending tokens 
to a contract address, make sure to include datum. If I run Cardano CLI transaction build, I can see the help dialog for this command. And as you can see, there's a lot that I can include and when it comes to attaching datum to an outbound UTXO, we have a variety of options. We can include just the hash of the datum. We can include a file, or we can include a simple value. And as you can see right here, that datum can be hashed, embedded, or inline. We will look one by one at each of these concepts in the lessons to come. In the transaction you'll build right now, we'll simply use an inline datum value, which, because this is an always succeeds contract, can really be anything we'd like. But to keep it simple, we'll use a simple integer as our inline datum value. Let's follow the same process that you followed in lesson 102.3 to build, sign, and submit this transaction. First, I'll set all my variables. On my computer, I've already set my sender address and my sender key, and you can do the same. Next, I will query my sender address to select a UTXO to use as input, and I'll decide how many Lovelace I want to lock in the contract. I can query my address, there's only one UTXO here, so I guess that's the one I'll use. And I have a little bit less than 100 ADA to spend. Let's lock 12.5 ADA. You can lock any amount you'd like. If I've set all of these variables correctly, I can copy and paste each of these commands one at a time, or I can just grab this entire block right here, copy it, and paste it into my terminal. I can see that the build step succeeded because I can see this estimated transaction fee message, and I can see that the transaction successfully submitted. Just like before, after a few minutes, I'll be able to see that my transaction was confirmed on chain. As you can see, when I query my address again, I have a new TX hash and there are fewer Lovelace in this wallet. Now, do you see how this transaction hash starts with EF3CA1, remember that, and it has TX index one. If I query the contract address again, I should be able to find a UTXO with the same transaction hash. Let's see if I can find it. Now, I also know that there were 12.5 ADA in this transaction. And so I see that amount right here. And look at this. This UTXO has the same transaction hash as the one I just saw in my wallet, but a different index. This index is zero. This index is one. And these are sequential values. The first output has a zero as the index. The next output has a one as an index, and if there were more UTXOs produced by the transaction, the transaction index for each output UTXO would increment accordingly. Finally, note that this new contract UTXO that I just created has inline datum, and here's the number that I included right here when I built the transaction. This is just the first step. We will continue to use this process as we dive deeper into more advanced smart contracts and different uses of datum. I'm excited to explore all of it with you. I hope you have some fun playing with this transaction and I'll see you at live coding or on Discord to keep going deeper into each of these concepts. See you soon.